here, come here. I want to tell you something. I'm proper upset. It all happened the night that we met in a blackout. It was a night I shall never forget. For I ran over there on my pushbike. And we were both of us rather upset. But I fumbled around in the darkness and soon got a pleasant surprise. For out of the night came a clear blinding light. It was the love light that shone from her eyes. Put out that dear light, it's illegal. A nearby air raid warden cries. I answered, don't shout, I'll soon have it out. And I did, I blacked both of her eyes. She murmured, my e-man, my hero. How lovely to meet in the dark. It's ever so nice is a kiss in the crisis. So we groped our way round to the park. I said, uh, take off that gas mask and kiss me. But she looked at me in alarm. Then she started to laugh and said, don't act so daft. I've got it tucked under me arm. Well, we sat there all quiet like for hours. The whole thing became a bit boring. Till I sprang up and said, there's a plane overhead. But it wasn't. It was only her snoring. She said, have you been evacuated? I said, now don't worry, keep calm. I were done as a lad, and by gum it took bad, so I showed her the scars on me arm. By now it was getting much lighter, but no songbird was singing close by, and I got such a shock when I looked at her clock. Well, I could easily understand why. She said, uh, what about getting married? I answered, well, don't think me rude, but before I agree, would you mind telling me, how are you off for food? Well, she said she'd a beautiful larder. I could see that from where I was stood. She'd plenty of fat, and I'm partial to that. So I answered and said that I would. They threw sandbags instead of confetti at the wedding, and quite by bad luck, won it, Matilda. And very nigh killed her, for the silly fool happened to duck. Now we're sharing an ARP shelter. It's built up against garden fence. And while I'm in possession, if she starts aggression, the battle will really commence. See? Now we've seen a lot of pictures of the people in the news, and we've got to know a lot of them by sight. Chamberlain with his umbrella, Winston Churchill with his hats, or Belisha, well we know him quite all right. But there's one whose lovely photograph we've seen for years and years, and we ask ourselves this question every time his face appears. Who is this man who looks like Charlie Chaplin? What makes him think that he can win a war? It can't be the moustache. That only makes us laugh. And Charlie's done it better, and before. If it wasn't for the boots and cane and trousers, you couldn't tell the two of them apart. But the whole idea is absurd. Charlie's never said a word. An adult couldn't play a silent part. Hmm? Imagine adult starring in the gold rush. He hasn't got a half of Charlie charm. But he gives a lot of trouble to his film director Gobbles when he plays the leading part in Shoulder Arms. He's amusing when he tries to play the villain. It's bound to get a laugh in every climb. I believe it's all a faker. And in spite of all the makeup, we are convinced it's Charlie Chaplin all the time. Hmm? Supposing Charlie Chaplin got the fever. A war would be a comedy, pro tem. Imagine adults getting skittish, signing pacts with Goldman British, and dropping custard pies on MGM. Charlie Chaplin would be bigger, louder, funnier. With him in charge, the battles would be fun. And the chief of his Gestapo wouldn't be Karl Marx, but Harpo. And he'd soon have Shirley Temple on the run. Hmm? If Adolf was in pictures, he'd try sob stuff. East Lynn would be his story as a start. Little Eva, played by Goering, would be a trifle boring. I'd sooner see Charles Lawton in the part. But don't let us be too hard on poor old Adolf. He's a godsend to the comics. He's sublime. 
cartoonists love his makeup, but one morning we shall wake up and find it's Charlie Chaplin all the time. Yavoo!